Hey there, everybody. My name is Eric Sullivan, and in this video, we're going to talk about what you are about to get into now that you are in a numerical analysis class. So you're maybe thinking to yourself, so I'm, I'm taking numerical analysis. What is this class going to be all about? So the question is, what is numerical analysis? And the, the main idea is that problems in numerical analysis kind of fall into several different categories. One of them is algorithms for solving mathematical problems on a computer. Now, that's very, very broad. Right? There's lots of algorithms to solve lots of different problems. So part of that is going to be how the algorithms are actually implemented. And some of it is going to be algorithms to solve problems which we otherwise just have no way of doing by hand. So um, that's going to be a large chunk of what we do in this class. Now, part of the analysis in numerical analysis is when we implement an algorithm, we're making errors usually between the exact solution which you would maybe work out by hand and what you're doing on the computer. And we would be able to analyze like how much error are we actually making? And another part of the analysis is analyzing the speed at which your algorithm is going to run. So maybe you've got two competing algorithms to do the exact same process. Which one's gonna be faster than the other one? Which one would you use in certain circumstances versus others? So let me give you a few examples. And actually, I really like this because in the way I teach numerical analysis, it really follows kind of um, the, the trajectory of your math career so far. So first we look at algebra, then maybe some calculus, and then maybe you learn some linear algebra. Um, and then after that, you learn some differential equations. And I'm, I've got examples for all of these. So in algebra, let's say we wanted to solve this equation, natural log x equals sine of x. Now stop and think about it for a second. Is there anything you would be able to do by hand to solve this equation, log x equals sine x? Uh, I, I, you're probably coming up short, like we can exponentiate both sides, no, that doesn't get us anywhere. You could take the arc sine of both sides, that doesn't really get you anywhere. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna subtract the sine x over and say, let's look at log x minus sine x equals zero as the problem. And what I've done here is I've written some code which you can completely ignore at the moment. And I've got log x minus sine x as my function. I want to figure out where it equals zero. And these stars and dots here represent successive better guesses, better and better guesses for where that solution is. And the black dot is actually finally our final guess. And we say it's about 2.219. And it ran in a second or two. It was super quick. So this is the sort of a numerical algebra sort of problem that we might solve. Okay, calculus. Let's say we wanted to evaluate this integral. Now, stop and think about it. How would you evaluate this integral? Right, we, we want to use fundamental theorem of calculus, so, hmm, I need an antiderivative of this thing. And if you think long and hard, there is no antiderivative for that thing. So the fundamental theorem of calculus basically completely fails. So, I've got a little code here. Again, you can completely ignore the code. This is the function we're dealing with, uh, sine of x squared on 0 to pi. And the shaded area is the area that we wanted. And my algorithm works in a half a second or so. And I've got um, approximation of the signed area. Of course, I've got negative area here and here, positive there and there. And it works perfectly well. Now, this is not going to be the exact area, so we could do some analysis to say, well, how far off is that area based on how I set up my code from the actual area? And we could actually do the same thing up here on the algebra problem. I could say, how far off is this answer of 2.219 from the actual answer, knowing how I set up my code? Okay, let's look at another one, linear algebra. In linear algebra, one of the fundamental problems to solve is this systems of equations thing. So we've got a, a system of linear equations. Um, let's think about how you would solve that. Typically, if you've had a linear algebra course, your first go-to instinct would be augment the coefficient matrix with the right-hand side matrix and row reduce. And that's perfectly fine. We can actually do that in code here. And the row reduce form is this guy right here. So we can see that the answer is 3, 1, negative 4. Again, you can completely ignore the code. Don't worry about it right now. So it comes up to a real nice solution. But as it turns out, 
there are way faster algorithms to do this exact, exact same thing and get us at 3, 1, negative 4. Turns out that row reduction is super, super slow. And we can build algorithms that'll do way better. Uh, now, 3 by 3 is kind of a silly example because we won't even notice the speed up difference between row reducing and something like this solve command. Um, but when we ramp this up to say like a thousand by thousand matrix, we will absolutely notice the difference. And my last example is in differential equations. Say we wanted to solve this differential equation. X prime is sine X squared plus T. So some differential equation with an initial condition. In other words, solve here does not mean work out a function for X of T. It actually now means give me an approximation. So again, you can ignore all my code here. I'm just going to run it real quick so that it, oops, maybe I'll run it. There we go. I'm going to run my code here real quick. And now when I say solve, I get an approximation at every individual time, and I can make a plot. And here's a plot of what the solution would look like. So over the course of a numerical analysis course, we're going to look at algorithms to do all of these things. And you'll notice that none of these were actually going to be things you could do by hand. Like all of your differential equations techniques were out the window. Fast ways to do row reduction. All you know is row reduction. You don't know the fast ways yet. Fast ways to do integration. Fast ways to do differentiation, equation solving. That's what numerical analysis is really going to tackle. All right. We'll see you in the next sections of the book.